Welcome to the Gold Team Championship Week 3 and it's the final day. At the end of today, we will know which team gets the first pick of opponents to ban for the second phase. They don't get removed from the tournament, it just means they don't have to play them. And VK on 4-1, on one, if they can win this, they will get to pick that ban. But Omega Zero, a player that many people will know from double world championship appearances, is in his way. Uh, looking at the bands, this was the week where Warlock and Plot Twist was a big deal. People saying it's the best deck ever, all this good stuff. And perhaps that's what's led to the Druid ban here. Maybe Omega Zero hoping to sweep through with the Warlock. But this does mean that Chiang has got access to Warrior and Demon Hunter. And what we have seen in general when people have access to Warrior and Demon Hunter is that having access to the two best decks in Hearthstone is a pretty good thing. Okay, starting off with a Warrior Mirror. I believe that VK have got the meaty version of the deck with Death Wings and Green Skins. But we will have to wait and see a little bit. For some reason the Warrior decks this week seem to be a little bit all over the place. Warrior Mirrors, one of the more interesting matchups of the current meta, as are most Warrior games to be fair. What is that debate of whether to really go for it early or not? And if you can get some damage in early on your opponent, it just bounces off unless you hit some kind of critical limit, at which point they just can do nothing about it. Um, but it is very possible to do too much, uh, or too little early damage, too much pushing early, and not get the job done. Always a little bit awkward as well doing what he's doing here, um, just coining out the challenger. If your opponent has a challenger, they can neutralize it. And you really like to play your one more challenger and play an inner rage at the same time, turn it into a 3 9, and it just deals with everything at that point. And then you do get one of those games where you just push your opponent's face and they end up dying from it. Really nicely done though here from Chiang Ming. It's going to work out well for him. Whatever Omega Zero plays, Chiang Ming's going to be able to play at the Rampage. Or one of them anyway. And then maybe the turn after that will get the opportunity to play the Mercenaries and have an absolute lock on the situation. Omega Zero obviously knows some of those things. He knows how the deck works. So it's up to him to find a play here. And there isn't a fun one. Bomb Wrangler is sometimes a way of meeting this, but playing weapon and going face or taking down the minion, you're scared. That's the trouble. So yeah, you have to hit the minion because he doesn't know there's no Inner Rage. Inner Rage Rampage would just be game over. And he needs to start doing damage to this right now. This is the correct play. Try and get it to zero health before it kills him. The downside is when you do it this way, well, you're going to see the downside, I suspect. This. This is the downside. And next turn's more downside. And Omega Zero has that sinking feeling that all Warrior players have had. That you're just not going to stop it. Sometimes you can stop it. It's possible. And if you do, you find that your opponent has run out of threats. You know there's no more Rampage of Sophia, etc, etc. But you have to go all hands on deck now you've gone down this course to remove this thing. And you've got to do every spare piece of damage you can to it. But if you can survive with maybe, well, 13 is a good number because it's outside of Gromash Inner Rage range, you can still win the game. There's a lot to go yet. Does he want to tank it again and then maybe skip a Bomb Wrangler? Is that a play? Just to get the absolute max out there. Or maybe Bomb Wrangler and Titanic Lackey is another option. But generating as many ways to bump into this thing as you can will be the priority here for Omega Zero. So he's going to take the Titanic Lackey out. This actually works out reasonably nicely. Here, <laughs> have some more health on this nonsense 
thing that you're trying to kill. Interesting to see the hero powers here. Don't see why he wouldn't. Basically, he's almost certain to take damage before it gets to the point where there's a battle rage involved. But anytime you're thinking of messing with 30 health, either taking your opponent below it, or armoring up and making it harder for yourself to go below it, you need to at least have a think about how it's all going to work out. Big Bomb! Really needed that to put some damage onto the minion. Both players reacting there. But Tianming is the one who comes out better off for it. And now it's a big emergency for Omega Zero. He's still going to do whatever damage he can to it. Every chance you're going to get mercenaried here, so you'd much rather than produce a 7 3 or something than a 7 7. But also now, Omega Zero needs to start planning his Armorsmith turn and how he wants to play this Battle Rage, if at all. What's he going to do? But first and foremost, you've got to kill this thing. Has he got a different plan in mind? Intriguing that he didn't tank that. Maybe he just decided he can't win by keep tanking it. Let's see what the plan is. I'm not a fan of the plan so far. But maybe he just decided it was never happening. He was trying to get an execute or something as a better option. Well... Do you want a 9-6 or a 7-7? Seven, seven? That's your question here to answer. Oof. That's lethal damage setup that we can see. Omega Zero can't see that, but obviously it doesn't take a genius to work out. You are in a whole bucket of trouble right now. LP looking, if they do sort of sink down here to go 2-4, they could get up to 3-3. Three, three. Not setting it on fire yet. Uh, the other players, Trunks, X-Hope, VVV. Something of the past generation of players for me, although that doesn't mean they're not still good, right? You pick Western players, you'll get some players that don't play much but are still really good. Someone like Pavel springs to mind. Uh, Kalento, another. I know they both got relegated this year, so bad examples, I guess, but Silvername being another. Some players that have been around forever, Firebat, they, they don't play necessarily as much as they used to, but still have it when it counts. And we need to find out, we need to watch and see which of the LP players have that ability still hanging around. Omega Zero was sort of the great saviour at the time we first saw him. So he's the one that are the players that I'd pin the most on, but I think X-Hope might be a bit more recently strong. So, every reason to believe that LP are going to be dangerous, but VK, this young team that incorporates the world champion, uh, just front-running this tournament right now. Currently level with RNG, but RNG are playing an extra game. No harm in using your inner rage to just kill everything off. Especially here where you're setting up a lethal. And that death wing's just going to be too slow. And this all goes back to the turn at the start where Omega Zero decided to bump into the War More Challenger. You, you kind of have to guess. Because if they have inner rage then you regret not bumping into it, but if they don't, then you wish you had bumped into it. And I was in favour of the time, but I've been thinking about it. The, the comment I made at the time was that if you have Inner Rage, you play your War Maul Challenger out, and then Inner Rage it so your opponent can't War Maul you back. Now, obviously there's levels of play and bluff and such like at this level of Hearthstone, but the very strong likelihood was that there was no Inner Rage. And so I wonder if Omega Zero actually needed to bump into it. It's a really tough call to make. Plus, it's going to get injured sooner rather than later. Plus, he had no other plays. So I think he was correct. But you can track back this awful situation he's in now all the way back to that turn. And there were definitely other options available. Again, that does not necessarily mean I'm saying he's right or wrong. I just like to 
Look at how the game has unfolded based on the decisions that were made and it's unfolded badly. That thing just never got stopped. Look at zero. One, zero, down. A long way still to go. Does have to get through this and the Demon Hunter. And I suspect he's going to have it in the hands of his Warlock later on. But first he's going with the Hunter. Highlander Hunter can just trash Warrior sometimes. If it curves nicely, it can trash anything. That's kind of how Highlander decks work. And Omega Zero, not having the best looking starting hand at the moment. But actually, you can get to Alex Straz as the Hunter. Zephyrus in the opener. And the hand will fill out nicely. Good chance of filling in those gaps between four and seven. Oh, picks up the three as well. This hand can get good in a hurry. Now with the pickup of the Apex Predator, makes this Zephyrus a lot more difficult than it previously was. I think he was probably just going to play it and wild growth and get into the, the CMR and maybe even the Alex rapidly. But now if he went for that route he wouldn't be able to play the Zixor Prime, which means he doesn't really want to take anything. There's no point taking Animal Companion or Brightwing. Um, he might get offered a backstab. Does he want to take that if he's offered it? And he does still go for the wild growth. Will he play the wild growth next turn? We'll get him to that CM out so much quicker. He can also play it on five and get to CM out on seven. Uh, it sounds weird. It's like a one turn nightmare. But definitely an option to just save the wild growth but you would rather play it now and that's what he does and now the game begins in earnest Xiaoming with the best deck in Hearthstone Omega Zero with a very good start of one of the other good decks in Hearthstone and Hunter's main weakness as Omega Zero gets the Mana Saber down looking to get the next turn CMAT Hunter's main weakness is dealing with the big things. There's no executes. People did run execute for a while. It's an obvious natural fit that, like, you look at the deck and you say, why is there no execute in this deck, you silly player? And then you put an execute in your deck. And you know what? Explaining why there isn't one isn't easy. Because it just feels like there should be one. But if you feel like there should be one, play it for a few games. And it just is never right. I mean, sure, it's right when you've got um, an opponent who plays a big taunt minion, but if you don't play the execute, you're playing something else in instead. You might kill them before they play the big taunt minion. And on the other side of that, you can kill anything else. You don't need the execute for the small things. It just doesn't work out the way the deck functions. It's definitely one of the better replacement cards if you wanted to do something a bit different. It's just not quite good enough. It's just how it works. Not a satisfactory answer, I know. But it's an honest one. So there are plenty of things to think about here for Omega Zero. One thing that might be amusing to do would be to put the Mana Saber into either the one attack minions, play Seamat, put the Seamat into the Challenger. Then put it into the 4-4 four, four, and it would bounce back to your hand because it wouldn't have taken 6 damage. And then you could do that same thing again next turn. That would be 24 damage to minions, that would be a lot. Not quite an emergency yet for Tianming but needs to work this turn well or it will be an emergency. Don't want to leave any of this on the board. Um, next turn you know things are going to start getting really nasty. If you leave out that mana saber you're just going to have bad things happen to you. So that's a clear. 
And he's got an okay board of his own. It's not amazing, but that's fine for a warrior. As the notes go flying. <laughs> wow. Always nice to pick that up after you've had your zigzag removed. And you feel this is a crucial couple of turns of the game. Hunter getting into the big stuff, but facing down potential massive damage over the next couple of turns. We can see it's not there, for the large part at least. It's the Griffin. <laughs> Must be nice. Such a good combo. It's funny how Highlander decks still have very stable combos lurking within them. Obviously the more you can put in, the, the merrier. Timming, filling up even more cards in hand. It's definitely a strength to not panic with this warrior deck. But at some point you do have to start delivering the damage because Hunter is going to start overwhelming you. And you know that next turn you're facing down Zixor Prime. So he puts out as much as he can. And when this lot's cleared up, Amakazira might feel like he's through the brunt of it. Yeah, and I was saying how he should get to Ziamats. Amakazira, nah, that's just not enough. He wants two Zixor Primes. Because why wouldn't you want that? The two turn lethal in one card. Okay, Chiang setting up, again, potential lethals, things that Omega Zero has to worry about. But really, is he worried though? He is dead to Corcoran Elite. And I was going to say he's dead to Corcoran Elite and Mercenaries, but he's just not. And it just goes for the Alex Stars, and this is nutty. And good luck, Warrior, dealing with that lot. It's kind of not the Warrior's bag to deal with when it gets like that. He might actually play the prime there, but it was pretty small. Doesn't really matter. He got the stuff he wanted from the Alex. There's a lot of good rolls from Alex, obviously. And he's looking at lethal or very close to it next turn himself. And Tian Ming is really looking for just something to keep him alive. Roll into something good in the combo. Getting as many good cheap things as he can out of this. Two mana, six eights. A pretty good card I hear. He does get to take care of the Alex Strahs this way as well. So still in this. Use a heck of a lot of resources to get here. And it does seem... Oh, it's a 5-7 now. Excuse my um, surprise there. Obviously, we know this is a 5 8, but earlier in this week it was a 6 8. So they must have had um, things change overnight. I'm not even going to look into how deck submissions and things worked for this week, but 
presumably that's why all my lists are messed up for this week. Maybe they submitted twice? But yeah, that, that explains quite a bit. Because I was quite surprised a couple of days ago when the brute was still 6 8 so oh, it must be next week, but it's happened midweek. And I don't know why that seems like a surprise to a lot of people to be wondering, but China have in the past managed to hold back servers and play on old patches and things for big events like this. And that's why I'm surprised. But this explains why the deck lists and why the warrior ones in particular have been playing silly games with me. And I'm a lot more happy now I know that. Good. Happy Lorinda for a happy cast. Now Grand Slam is going to finish this off next turn. Three of the three fives will go face and the other one will kill the minion. Unless I'm missing something absolutely insane. And the game will be level at one apiece and the warrior out of the way. It's going to be Demon Hunter and Highlander Mage left for VK. The Hunter will be re and we still have the Plot Twist Warlock waiting in the wings for Omega Zero. See what Tianming chooses to queue up here. And I would I expect it to be the Demon Hunter. Mage is a little bit slow against Hunter's Relentless curving out. And Zephyr's on two again for Omega Zero. But some very nice things here for Tianming as well. Took me a very long time to be comfortable with beaming sidekicks. But I think you might get a demonstration here of how good they are. Just that early defence. Already working out if he needs to play it now or not. In the ideal world, he'd like to keep the coin for next turn for the freeze options. In the ideal world, your opponent wouldn't always play Zephyrus on two. Yeah, and Tianming thinking the same as me. Why is it always there? Don't know why it's always there. I'm sorry. Wish I could help. But it is. Double sidekick option. Other plan would be to freeze the Zephyrus. And then double sidekick up your Shadow Weaver the next turn if it is still there. And sometimes, playing Hearthstone, you just have to take your life in your hands and hope you've picked correctly. And he's actually just going to not do that. He's going to use the Slice. I've been playing with one mana Slices all day, so pardon me. Use the Slice to take down Zephyrus and not rely on any luck at all. Just be a kill command or something that could ruin his day now. And you can see how crazy next turn could be. Zero. Actually, it's quite amusing to me because at the time of casting, we've just had the next Demon Hunter nerf, the one where Slice went to one mana, which was my excuse for missing that last turn. Bad excuse, but that's the excuse I'm using. And it's also the first day we have the previous nerf, so I'm precisely one nerf behind. at the time of casting of course. So Chunming deciding that the best way to deal with this really difficult to deal with fairy dragon is to just blank it and hit Omega Zero in the face. Sort of the Demon Hunter way, if in doubt hit them in the face. I think Demon Hunter has made the game so much better. I think the complex decisions it leads to are actually very interesting. I know that there'll be people out there listening to this going, complex decisions, yeah, think for 30 seconds, then hit them in the face. But the ordering of your cards, the planning of your outcast, 
Uh, especially in some of the slower Demon Hunters, the OTK variants really lead to skillful players doing better than newer players. And that can only be good. But you still get to hit people in the face sometimes. Which is why we're all here in the first place, right? I'm a Gazero though, he doesn't want to hit people in the face. But he's going to anyway. And he knows this is just not a good position. But what can he do? Chiming. Just going to play the obvious play. Play Omegazero knew was coming. See, he's going to delay the obvious a little bit. Having the double Shadow Weaver just makes his life so much better. And this is where Hunter can struggle. Uh, I was saying earlier about how it's fantastic to play on curve with really efficient big things and it's nice, we love doing that. But look how this works out now, you play the Whelp, your opponent hits you for a million. You play Varanus, your opponent hits you for a million more GG. And your other options, well, <laughs> you haven't really got other options this time, you're not going to kill your opponent in time. And surely this is too slow. Wow, okay. He thinks the Fairy Dragon might be able to jump back to life in time. It's going to be pushed. Let's see if he's got it right. Another 8 damage visits Omega Zero's face. About four damage and some defence. Uh, Jamming well aware that Omega Zero probably has to tank this in the face anyway. If he's going to try and remove it. But does pick up the Unleash. And in conjunction with the, the Zix or Apex Predator. Yeah, he can clear the board. The dogs is three damage. One from the weapon plus one from the Locust plus two from the Zix or. He can do seven. He only needs to do six to clear the board. This has worked out for him. The early play of the Fairy Dragon has, has given him a lot of bargaining power in this game. And he is in a spot where he can go 2-1 two, two up. Having got rid of Demon Hunter and Warrior, should he get this done? Still a long way to go because Demon Hunter, especially with the Adept that just kills things, still going to have Reload. Probably have better card draw. And Omega Zero not that close to killing him. Although on 15, a brand would change things rapidly. Let's put it that way. But really here, Jiaming looking for some card draw. And that's not card draw. That's a silly, silly mage. So slice into glaive bound into I beam into hit you for four. You've got the board back. And where do you put the four from the glaive bound? Probably face because you can I beam away the zigzag. And Omega Zero once again on the back foot. But once again is able to clear everything. And this time Tianming has no answer available. Needs to pick up a way out of this. He has got two turns. Well, he thinks he's got two turns. But has he? Dragon's Bane and shoot your face could be seven so if he doesn't go all in here he's facing certain lethal if he does go all in 
probable, well sorry, probable, one in three lethal. And then it's going to be up to Omega Zero again what to take. And these Warglaves have given Chiang Ming his own two turn lethal. This is a nutty game. So Omega Zero, like the base level play is go face, play Dragon's Bane, press hero power and hope it all goes away. Is the game still in progress? Yes. And Metamorphosis, I was going to say, is the only out. And Tian Ming has ripped it off the top. And takes the game. And what a huge moment for the entire league this could be. VK on their 4 1 record. Going at one all, which is the key point of a last hero standing match, usually. Takes the 2 1 lead. I don't think there were any other outs. I guess. Skull probably gave redraws. Maybe like a Chaos Strike or something? But now he gets to line this up against the plot twist. And he's in a fantastic, fantastic spot. And even if this goes well for Omega Zero, which I think it's an underdog, Tian Ming will get another go with his mage. So, two plot twists and a Moag in hand, causing Omega Zero to have to think, but wants to try and get the healing from the Moags. Those chunks of eight healing can help you substantially. And Tian Ming's job is just to hit you very hard, hit you very fast. I wondered if he was going to use this twin slice. And he does, because if this isn't removed, that extra one damage is one damage every turn, more that you're doing. So if this sits around for two or three turns, that's two or three extra damage. And it's very unlikely your opponent just kills this on turn one. Omega Zero's a bit flustered by this because if the next turn is a beaming sidekick, he he pretty much never gets there. And so he's actually just forsaken the quest entirely. It's something we saw Kalento do was even mulligan the quest away. And that turned out to be bad. I think when people discussed how to play with the quest. The problem if you throw it away is that Demon Hunter doesn't stop drawing cards. So the idea of throwing the quest is you use all your early game like Omega Zero is doing now. And eventually the Demon Hunter stops making minions and you have a chance of killing them. The problem is if you haven't completed your quest, you have to pay two for your cards and they're playing, they're just doing skulls and things and they end up getting stuff and killing you anyway. So you do have to complete the quest. Um, often in very aggressive fashion by taking a lot of damage and just relying on plot twists to heal you back up. And then when you complete the quest, you're on an equal footing, you get some Nought Manor cards and you out-tempo the Demon Hunter and beat them. But Omega Zero is taking a, a middle ground here. He's kept the quest, but he's not using it early on. I'm interested by this. I most certainly would like to subscribe to his newsletter. So this is how you would expect the game to go down, which is the Warlock taking a lot but getting rid of most of the problems. However, this pickup here for Tian Ming is a big deal. Going to be able to force more damage through and then get the Warglaze activated and going to start forcing a lot of damage. Those three a turn because the Warlock doesn't play many minions, although he has picked up the Ooze. Because the Warlock doesn't play many minions, this just comes in at three a turn over and over repeatedly. 
But there is an Uzi and there's a Cloud Suit as well. Both of which not necessarily that standard in the deck. You might say that about the Blood Mage as well, but I think that's a bit more standard. Chemi has done enough damage though. Trying to force Omega Zero to have to sense demons to just gain four health. Double Skull should allow him to draw into that metamorphosis. Maybe a cane as well for when he has to get through some taunts. You don't have to get through many times when your opponent's on 18. Chemming on the verge of putting VK top of the table. And we haven't even seen Lion yet. She was on a show called The Brain with the 60 brainiest, I suppose, people in China. China's a big place. If you're the 60 brainiest people in China, you're going well. I'm not in the 60 brainiest people in this room. And I'm on my own with the cat. Okay, Chiaming, that's how he works out. And. Okay, that looks good. That's a load of damage available, and you take it. Especially with Metamorphosis in hand again. Metamorphosis, however you say it. Choosing to kill off the Netherwing. He still gets the two damage. Gets the extra bump, the extra 2 2. And actually, he gets rid of the weapon. Before such a time as the Swampoos can ruin it. So your mission this turn is to clear the board and get out of range of being killed. Not pleasant. You know there's a reduced card. And from this point onwards you're always expecting to just get Altriest as well. As soon as there's been a skull play, you, you just fancy your chance of being blown up by crazy altruists. So, Omega Zero could twist here. So, get somewhere with his quest, maybe get some more removal. You can nether down the 4 2 first. This just loses if Kane comes off the top, though. I'm kind of glad it didn't, because I think people would start to suspect that I was just cool, being told what was coming, but no. Chemming has had some good draws. Not the easiest. Choice between Metamorphosis or swinging in using your Adept to kill off the Cartoon Defender. Also do have the option to play the second Satyr here because you want to play around Dark Skies. You've already seen one Netherwing so it would be an understandable play. He's feeling the pressure a little bit. This is a massive championship. We can't state that enough. Okay. Using one of his slices to just generate more minions, get the maximum value out of this. Pretty safe looking board. And this damage going face puts him well in range of just easy victories now. But this Warlock deck can sometimes just hang in there forever. Is this going to be one of those times? It doesn't look like it at the start of the turn. Eleven health. You know you're facing a metamorphosis shot. That's six left. Hero power, five left. Now, Demon Hunter doesn't have much damage available to it, but clearing the board and leaving five to be found might be a bit wishful thinking. So does he try and heal? This is where he likes from zero cost cards, right? He's only 7 out of 20 on the quest. Hmm. 
So going for the, the natural play. There's so many ways this just doesn't work. Like most of them. Nope. Well, sense demons might keep him alive. It's good, I hope it does. Okay, back to 23, but look at the damage incoming. 5 and 9 is 14. 3 more is 17. I don't know, it depends how he chooses to play it. There's a lot of damage. I don't think it's lethal, but it's a lot. In fact, I don't think rather than I know shows how much damage there is coming in here. Yeah. And you've just seen your opponent scrambling for cover and there's no way out for him this time. I guess he could... Oh, he dice the weapon. I was going to say he could questing and then blow up the board. The legendary minion that he drew, but it's not there. And Chen Ming, all tense because he knows it's going to probably be the end. And if it's the end, VK will be in the lead at the end of week three. Okay, Zero takes down the weapon and plot twists. I guess he could still gain health. Okay. Well, he gave it a go. He's still got a tap available to him. Could get Twisting Nether. Get some Malagos. Goes to 15. He's actually made to stay alive. And not only that, but he's managed to put a Malagos on the board, which could win in the match. This is absolutely insane. And is it one short of lethal? Uh, one from the weapon, four. I think it might be exacties. It is exact lethal here. And Omega Zero there. Yeah, Chen Ming can't believe how hard that was. He thought he'd got it, then he had to go through another turn. Omega Zero nearly stabilised, but Chen Ming. And his tiger. Get it done.